when I was in um, postnatal. So some, uh, so a mother had a baby and her baby had some sort of illness and that's why they were both in hospital. And so she was sort of staring out the window and I came in to do a set of obs on her, which is just like, you know, your vital signs and blood pressures and all that. So I came in, it's like, hey, how you going? Nice to meet you, I'm Darren, one of the nurses here. Just gonna check your obs. And then she sort of just stood there by the window and she was, she just slowly turned around. She's like, it's really funny because I've been here for three days and no one's asked me how I am. You know what I mean? And that's like, damn, you know, it's something that's so, um, so routine for me to say, hey, how you going? It, it was just a moment where I was like, if, if even just one sentence can, you know, really change someone's day or experience somewhere, then it definitely is important to really get to know them on a personal level. So that's, that was just my introduction into a whole sort of life of someone else. You know, I've, I've been able to sort of step in and that's opened me up to something new and that's opening them up to something that they should have, should have had. It's a lot easier to other somebody, a lot easier to other somebody um, when you have no real concept of what they're going through. So it's really difficult to develop empathy and compassion for something you just don't understand, which isn't so much a product of being malicious, but it, it can be just ignorance. So that's why I think having these conversations is important because it is happening and it does affect all of us. If you're not happy and if you're not at a certain level of happy, then something's wrong with you. And no one wants to be seen as wrong. Everyone wants to be seen as well. No one wants to be sick. No one wants to be sad. Everyone wants to be calm, happy, but never true happiness. It's always fake. You know, there are people in the family that don't know that I have bipolar and then I've had multiple admissions. And like, they, just, like, they ask me like, where'd you go? I was like, you don't, like, I'm open, yeah. but like, they just don't talk about where I went for three months. It's like, yeah. it's, where it do you think back, I went? Like, yeah. where, where, like, it's just weird. It comes back to that stigma that's still here. Stigma like, is so mm -mm. real. Every person I've ever told that I have this freak out. What? But you don't look like it. And I always ask them, what does that look like to you? What does anxiety and depression look like to you? What does being schizophrenic look to you? Okay? Or someone, you know, who's got an addiction. What does an alcoholic look like? And they'll tell me their stereotypes. Someone with anxiety has messy hair, big jumpers, you know. They look scared. But that's not what it is. No one looks like that, really. And people who do, that's just them being them. And it's the same for everything else, every other kind of stereotype. Stereotypes are ridiculous and they're harmful. And we need to make sure that we fight against those stereotypes so that everyone can feel comfortable in saying, I have anxiety, I have depression, I need help, and not have people come to them and say, but you don't look like it. You don't look like you have mental health issues. I think you're seeking attention. And that's harmful. It's harmful to tell people that they don't have something when you don't know for sure if they do or they don't. I think from like society's perspective, if you are sort of like diagnosed with having like depression or anxiety, for example, um, it's almost like they make you want to identify yourself as that. But it is also like, I feel like just one aspect of who you are amongst all this other stuff. So I think I used to say that, um, like, I'm an anxious person, for example. But now it's like not identifying so strongly with that and being like, I have anxiety sometimes you know just creating that sort of like distance i have to say uh, because i take uh, careful notice of this amongst people i dwell around that there has been an incredible improvement of of how parents are actually doing something about their children's mental health that would not have been the case in my parents generation so it's been fantastic to see less stigma around helping your child um, get treatment through a counsellor um, in particular. And yet I still see parents who are not doing anything about their children with um, anxiety when it's quite obvious to them because they're concerned that they're labelling them. Yet they would take them to the doctor for concerns about 
other medical issues. So yes, yeah, still we've come a long way, there's still a long way to go to reduce the stigma. <laughs>